Coming up on today's Airborne, it was a close vote, but the Boeing machinist accepted the 777X proposal by 51% to 49%. Annan will offer expert guidance to the Sebring Sport Aviation Expo. And Alpha supports same flight and duty rules for all airline pilots. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. It appears that Washington State will remain the home of the 777X program. Members of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, District 751 in Puget Sound, District W24 in Portland, and District 70 in Wichita have confirmed that they have voted by 51 to 49 percent to accept an eight-year contract extension that assures the 777X airliner will be built in Puget Sound by IAM members. In addition to securing the manufacture of the 777X fuselage and carbon fiber wings for the Puget Sound region, the agreement reaffirms Boeing's commitment to maintain 737 MAX production in Renton, Washington through 2024. Analysts estimate the two programs could account for as many as 20,000 direct and indirect jobs and billions in economic activity. Dr. David Jewell, a regular contributor to ANN and a longtime advocate for greater expertise in sales and marketing for sport aviation companies, will be presenting a forum on Thursday, January 16th at the Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida. The forum will be held in Forum Area 3 at 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Dave has been a conspicuous advocate for greater marketing education for over a decade, starting primarily with a series of articles entitled In the Business of Aviation, but Not in the Business of Business, a series that remains one of our most requested and remarked upon to date. In addition to Dave's Thursday presentation, ANN will present a Friday forum again in Area 3 at 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time, by LSA expert Earl Downs. It will address the realities of what is and what is not an LSA in today's world and what you can do with them. On Saturday, the entire ANN staff will be available for a sport plane Q&A in Area 3, again at 1045, where they'll be available to answer questions or comment on any sport plane topic presented by attendees. As previously announced, ANN will also be preparing a basic introductory guide to the sport plane industry, a sport plane resource mini guide that will be available in ebook format free following a review of the offerings at this year's event. Persons interested in receiving a free copy of the mini guide may request an EPUB, Kindle, or Adobe Acrobat version by emailing sbrg mini at aero-news.net. The Airline Pilots Association International, known as ALPA, issued a statement regarding the implementation by the FAA and DOT of FAR 117, the new science-based flight time and duty regulation that went into effect on January the 4th. ALPA says the new science-based flight and duty time rules are a significant victory for safety and the traveling public in the United States because they represent a long overdue overhaul of decades-old flight and duty regulations. However, the regulations exclude cargo airline pilots and ALPA is pushing to have these pilots included in the regulation. ALPA's position is that regardless of whether they are transporting passengers or cargo, cargo airline pilots fly at the same aircraft types over the same routes and into and out of the same airports as passenger airline pilots. This is why ALPA supports a U.S. House bill called the Safe Skies Act, which would require that cargo pilots also be included in these regulations in order to increase overall safety for the public. Red Bull Air Racing returns this year, and safety is the key word for this race season. Racing fans will see this when they look at the new Pylon Air Gates. Since their last public outing in 2010, the teams at Red Bull Air Racing 
have been working hard to engineer the safest, most stable pylons yet. For this season, the race pylons will be bigger and better while retaining their iconic cone shape, but with marked safety improvements. The most obvious change for the new pylons is their height of over 82 feet. That's 16 feet taller than those used in 2010. Race pylons must be designed to rip apart instantly on contact, without impacting the pilot or the plane, but also remain stationary in all weather conditions. Since the first races in 2003, 30 different materials and fabrics have been assessed for their suitability as Red Bull Air Race pylons. This process has involved rigorous assessments from simple pylon hit simulations using cars with mounted wings to highly sophisticated computer calculations. Red Bull says that the new flight windows will make this year's series the safest Red Bull Air Race World Championship yet. Hang on to your wallet, it's going to be an expensive ride. Airlines are likely to increase baggage and other add-on fees this year, and some have already started. It's reported that airlines collected over $6 billion in baggage and change fees in 2013, and United Continental Holdings did not wait for the first of the year to reach for your wallet. The carrier has already doubled its fees for oversized bags to $200, and upped its fees for passengers with three or more bags from $100 to $125 for each bag. The airline said through a spokesperson that the change was partly due to the infrastructure needed to handle oversized luggage. Delta collected about a billion dollars in fees last year, with United Airlines in second place at about $650 million. Spirit's fee structure is a little different. Pay online when you book your ticket and the bag is $6. That's up from what it used to be at $5. But if you gate check luggage on Spirit, they're going to ding you for $100 each bag. Stand by for some counter rage when you check in for your next flight. A composite construction amphibious airplane capable of carrying five to six passengers is in the works through a collaboration between Virginia-based Privateer Enterprises and Comp Air Aviation in Titusville, Florida. Comp Air Aviation claims a history of building high-performance composite aircraft, and over the past 15 years have been building carbon composite kit aircraft with an eye towards FAA certification. John Meekins, owner of Privateer Industries, said he, quote, recognized the experience of Comp Air Aviation and a team was formed, end quote. Meekin says the aircraft is to be built of carbon fiber composites, making a light and strong airframe that is protected against the corrosion often associated with waterborne aircraft. This light structure, combined with the 724 horsepower Walter 601 series turbine engine, will deliver performance not seen by previous amphibians. Meekins, who describes himself as an industrial real estate developer, pilot, entrepreneur, and inventor, said he couldn't find a suitable seaplane for him and his family, so he decided to design and build one. That led to the partnership with Comp Air, which now will develop a proof-of-concept prototype of the airplane. Entries for the Air Race Classic opened last Thursday. The four-day all-women transcontinental air race will be capped at 55 teams this year, and collegiate teams normally make up nearly 20% of each year's racers. This year's race will begin at Buchanan Field in Concord, California on June 16th, and hopscotch across the middle of the United States before ending in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania at Capital City Airport. Each team consists of at least two women pilots. They must fly VFR during daylight hours only and are given four days to make flybys at each in route stop and then land at the terminus. The race route is approximately 2,400 status miles in length. Each plane is handicapped and the challenge for each race team is to achieve actual ground speeds as far over the handicap speed as possible. 
Over 20 of the women will be actively enrolled in aviation education programs. The collegiate teams have effectively remained competitive, gaining momentum each year. In 2013, four teams took the top 10 positions. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, drop us an email to news by at aero-news.net. Evergreen International Airlines has filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy documents in Delaware following an involuntary petition by its creditors two weeks ago. Tom Patton has that story. The filing was made in federal bankruptcy court on New Year's Eve. In the documents, the company estimated assets of $100 million against debts of up to $500 million, according to a report from Oregon Live. Employees were notified in an email forwarded to the news organization by a former employee that was sent by Human Resources Director Monique Gregory, who said an unidentified trustee will handle all human and public relations functions going forward. Gregory outlined the procedure employees should follow for health care and 401k assistance. The documents included a list of seven entities submitting the application as well as 108 pages of creditors to the company. It's not clear how the filing will affect the company's nonprofit partners, including the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum and the Wings and Waves Water Park. The U.S. Justice Department is investigating whether the funds for the nonprofit and for profit ventures were improperly commingled. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. The government of India has officially canceled a contract with Augusta Westland, worth about $600 million, because of allegations that the helicopter company's managers took kickbacks from the deal. The contract was initially signed in 2010, and it's reported that the Indian government said Augusta Westland violated an integrity pact by using outside agents to close the deal. That allegation came after early reports of kickbacks to the company. It's reported three of the 12 aircraft ordered have already been delivered, and the decision to cancel the remaining nine helicopters on order was made by the Indian Defense Minister after a meeting with India's Prime Minister. Officials of the Italian helicopter company and its parent, Finn Mechanica, have denied any wrongdoing, according to reports. The aircraft ordered were high-end AW-101 aircraft to be used for VIP transport for dignitaries such as the Prime Minister and the country's president. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. How low is a low pass? This low pass by a Goonie bird is so low it takes a few seconds of the video to figure out what's headed your way. 
Search DC3 Low and Fast on YouTube. And don't forget to duck. The Whirly Girl Scholarship Fund is expanding its sponsorship program to include 12 initial memberships to the organization. These sponsorships allow women who fly helicopters to join the Whirly Girls organization at no cost and take advantage of the many benefits of being a member, including participation in the Generous Scholarship Program. The Whirly Girls Scholarship Fund Incorporated was created to oversee and administer the scholarship funds raised by the Whirly Girls and their auxiliaries. The scholarship fund administers a number of separate scholarships currently valued at approximately $65,000. Whirly Girls was formed in 1955 by Jean Ross Howard Phelan, who wanted to build a community where female helicopter pilots could share and grow. Today, it has grown to include the largest source of scholarships for female helicopter pilots. Membership is open to any woman with a helicopter license. There is also a Whirly Girls Auxiliary available to those who are not eligible for regular membership. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Stay tuned for a special announcement about our schedule for this year. In the meantime, join us every Tuesday and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.